Every time the whispers touch me, I lose something, a part of myself. Tonight marks a new beginning. For Shinra! This could well be her last line of defense. Let's go. Let us defy destiny. Together. Cloud, there's still so much to be done. Welcome to the 3A Podcast Hump Day Show. I'm Jerks, and today I'm joined by JP. You know, you know, you love him. Linkster 101. Uh, and Tony's man, What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony, for joining us today. It was really hard to find somebody that I knew that played the game. <laughs> everybody's Y'all like, some lames. Everybody's Y'all like, some lames. Everybody I knew was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to play the game. I just haven't gotten it. Oh, my God. <laughs> but uh yes we were able to get a hold of tony thank you so much for joining us dude thank you so much for kind of coming in at the last minute I appreciate yeah i appreciate that appreciate that Hard not work. a problem at all i i appreciate the guys offer i'm excited to be here yeah so we're here to do the final fantasy 7 remake review there will be spoilers. Yo. let me tell you right now in the front of this will be spoilers there will be spoilers there will be spoilers if you're a super mega fan you already played it so nobody cares if you're not one of those nerds, <laughs> then don't worry about it but let's jump into the graphics of the game so far you guys wanted to talk about the graphics go ahead yeah uh hands down the they the way they remade this game um into what it is now keep in mind it was pixelated at first we're talking about i believe it's 1998 when the original came out um it was around the it, it was 1998 99 it was like 97 or 98 if i'm not mistaken yes so imagine that pixelated you're talking about in the playstation and now to fully like graphic awesome looking characters that almost look human in my opinion what do you think tony um i definitely agree uh characters um were beautifully designed um, beautifully i was i was actually very very surprised like it just in in basic conversations with people you know yeah even different facial features on everybody every little thing yes and like and each character has their own expressions it's not like all set and their mouth like when they talk they actually goes with what they're actually saying i don't know if they mm-hmm. had intent on that because i know they have the japanese version and and, and which i want to try it out but uh the way the voice actors awesome for almost every single character um I feel like the way they portrayed the characters, the way they looked uh, uh, in the game, um, it brought it out a lot more, made you more get into their character a little bit more just by actually seeing them. Um, But the fighting, wow, the fighting was amazing. Just Mm -hmm. amazing. Uh, The gameplay itself uh, and the style and the graphics and the fights, the way you hit. Uh, the way you, you know, everything looks, uh, the movements, the uh, limits. I mean, Tony, it was so much. It just brought a There's, lot of awesome memories back. Oh, definitely. Uh, the nostalgia feature is uh, like like this, that, that factor of like, I remember this. I played through this, you know, when I was a kid or when I was a teenager, whenever you played it. Um, it was it was insane. Um, the, the the fighting, the the combat mechanics in general were, were fantastic. They were fluid. Um, they introduced the new ATV meter. Um, yes. In which you could be fighting free flow in the middle, hit a, a single button, boom, bring up a menu. You can figure out what you want to do, and you can control the three different characters that you have in your party at any time. And you can be fighting with one, but have another one do something else yeah. while you're in the middle of comboing at the same time. It was, it was, it was beautiful. And, I mean, they they brought these monsters, these pixelated monsters, and they made them look <laughs> awesome. Even some some of the bosses that weren't actually bosses in the original game, mm-hmm. uh, they looked amazing here. Uh, one of those things, and it's a spoiler alert here, uh, when you're fighting in the Coliseum and you see the haunted house in its full glory and the way it looks, uh, it was just amazing. I think they did a wonderful job bringing this to life into the form that we have now in video games uh, uh, where the graphics are just out of this world. Oh, definitely. I agree. Um, jumping into that fight, I personally wasn't expecting that. Like, I was wandering around because in the original, you know, you're just running and then boom, random encounter, you got a, little, just, a, a yeah. little house enemy. Yeah, I'll take him out quickly. No, this was, <laughs> this was a boss fight that was take, they, they took a normal enemy, made it into a boss fight, but it wasn't just simply, okay, well, this guy's bigger than everybody else. Let's mm-hmm. wail on him. There were so many different pieces to the puzzle of trying to figure out how to, how to, how to take him down, how to get him staggered, how to, how yes. to hurt him in any way. 
Yes, and 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 just the visual uh, effects on everything, the way your sword style is, uh, the way Garrett's gun and how he charges. I love that. I love that where he's shooting and then he just charges. I love oh, that definitely. crap. Um, Tifa, the way she's fighting. I think Tifa was one of the best characters in this game as far as the way she looks. She looks amazing, amazingly hot. Um, you know, almost. You know, I mean, I'm just telling you how it is. She's just, I mean, she's just a, a video game character, but the way they made her look was pretty awesome. And I think they did a very good job in maintaining the way her, the way she would have looked, you know, uh, the way we thought she would look from the pixelated version. So now I think they did a great, great job on that. Oh, definitely. Um, everybody was designed very, very well. Um, you can tell that they did a lot of fan service for all of these different yeah. characters. Even smaller characters that you didn't have a lot of interaction with, you know, Jesse, Biggs, Wedge. They yeah. took all of these small characters that you didn't care too much for in the original, and they, they brought them out, and they, they, they show you about their lives. They show you their personalities, and they really make you care for these characters. Mm -hmm. And I think visually that helped out a lot. Uh, oh, but as, as far as graphics, I, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 on that. I think it's one of the best stuff that I've seen lately. Um, the sword play, they brought out like the swords and different type of, uh, of uh, weapons that you can use. And each one has their own detail and it's nicely made. Uh, um, and once you equip it, you know how sometimes you can notice when you play video games, like it's just like, like, like Destiny. You know how Destiny, when you're loading up and it has like that big old purple or orange or oh yeah you know when it's loading up the weapon this doesn't have that it's very fluid the weapons just pop up appear and even in the cutscenes they appear and in very well formatted so i mean and, i thought it was awesome definitely and I, that was actually something that i like to nitpick with games like that where it's like yeah. okay well i've got a different weapon i've got different gear well why doesn't it show when you're here no and if you have a quick you see it on your characters in cutscenes you see it while they're walking around every even the materia on the slots, you can mm -hmm. actually see them in the cutscenes, guys. That's how good, and they did such fan service there. I mean, it, it was awesome uh, in regards to the graphics. I mean, what would you give it, Tony? Honestly, um, I'm going to give it a 9.8 out of 10 for oh, wow. one simple reason. For one simple reason. There is a point um, when you're trying to get into, or you're trying to, to, to get into the next Shinra uh, Mako reactor. And you're up and you, you, you've got to take out some lamps. Um, if you look down at the ground, you can definitely see it's just a straight JPEG image yeah. from the original. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, just, it, it looks, I, it looks I, like I, a complete JPEG image. Dude, that did not bother me. That it didn't bother me either, but it, it was funny me. to see. It was funny because it was like, they were like, fuck that. We're not going to do all that shit. We're just going to give you a pixelated version. We gave y'all enough. <laughs> Uh, like that's it everything else yeah. is detailed Get over everything this else one is detailed thing. yeah so let's just hop into uh the next thing i think uh and um i guess you can help me with this on tony sound. is the sound. sound oh go ahead no go ahead oh no no i thought you said stop i was like oh no, i'm sorry no, no, i'm sorry no, <laughs> no, you, you, no. no uh, the next thing i want to jump into is the audio and sound quality um overall of the video game uh let's just let's just get this out of the way guys the music carries this game to a higher place than what it originally would if it was just basic music. This is music that's just amazing. It fits with everything. Um, it gets you in the mood. It pumps you up. When you go fight a boss, a certain music comes on. And it's not for just that specific boss. It's for different other bosses. Everything's so different. I thought the music was excellent. It kept me in that Final Fantasy mood throughout the game. I don't know mm. what you think about the music, Tony, but I thought it was awesome. Oh, oh I definitely agree. The music was... On a scale of, of 1 to 10, this music was 150. There was, I don't believe there was a single track in this game that I didn't enjoy. There were, I, there were even times where I could be in the middle of a fight or in the middle of just walking around or anything, and I would just stop, you know, bring up my menu in a fight or just stop walking just so I could listen to the music because it's, yeah, it's, it's so, it's revitalized. Like it's, it's nostalgic. Still the, it's so it's, nostalgic. It's still the same tracks that we know, yeah. but they, they improve on them and they they up that scale by a thousand. It's it was it was incredible. Um, and I found myself, you know, like for example, when you go to jukeboxes, because around the game you find like little albums mm -hmm. and you have to collect. I believe it's like thirty one albums, and in those albums, there's like techno beats of the original soundtracks. Like it's so cool. Uh, my favorite one was Prelude, the number one, the very first one. Um, Prelude that you get from that guy when you start off the game with Tifa. Mm -hmm. You're collecting it. You that particular one that was my favorite. And if oh, you listen to the whole thing, I was like playing darts and jamming out. 
the whole time. Dude, so Prelude was amazing. <laughs> um, I did actually have the opportunity oh, right. um, where I'm at. I had the opportunity to pick up the deluxe edition. So I've got the steel bookcase. It came with an art book. And it actually came with a with a mini soundtrack. So it has a couple of tracks that you can find in the game or that would play in the game. And I have that CD in my car, and I listen to it when I drive everywhere. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. That's a fan right there. And it's not that bad, guys. You might think it's like, ner- it's really not. Like, it's actually a pretty nice soundtrack, I have to admit. So I would find myself, like, trying to find these little albums to find out what they sound like. And, and the tracks are awesome. I would say even a little bit better than the actual music that is in Final Fantasy. But also uh, talking about <clears throat> audio quality, not just the music, but the voice acting here is phenomenal. Um, a lot of this, I, I believe a lot of this is like unknown actors. They did go a lot of new. We know the voice of Cloud, the original voice of Cloud is not uh, on display here. It's a new, uh, yes, a new guy. True. And then we also have Tifa, who's someone new, uh, Aerith as well. And then we have, of course, uh, uh, I, I believe his name, Garrett. Garrett's uh, character, the, the, the guy who plays him, the audio guy, um, he actually has done a lot of video game voice acting. And he's very mm. recognizable. I'm sorry, I just don't know the names. I just know the voices. No, I'm yeah, I, I honestly, I can't remember the names of them either. The only one that really stuck out or like stood out to me the most as far as like the new cast was Cody Christensen. Um, and he is the new voice actor for Cloud. And I feel like he... Mm-hmm. He did so good. Um, I think he everybody, did well too. I, I, I remember seeing a lot of stuff. Everybody was so mad that they were replacing mm-hmm. um, the voice actor. But I feel like this guy, he he hit it on the like like on the nail. He he did so good. And and Cloud, the way he makes him sound, he sounds like he wants to be distant, but he can't because yes. he's actually now opened up a bit. And I think in the voice acting that brought that out. Uh, Tifa's voice, awesome. Her voice actor, uh, Aerith, witty, funny. Uh, the voice actor for her, like, just got Aerith into a point where normally in the original, you don't really get that from Aerith. It's very small cutscenes. You don't see much interaction with her and and Tifa. But here in this game, there is some interaction. I'm not going to say it's massive, but it is quite a bit. And in that interaction, you can hear those voice actors and you get like this in your head like, yeah, that's how Eric would sound or that's how Tifa would sound. I thought the the voice quality, even for uh, um, uh, um, Red 13, uh, I thought his voice acting was pretty well. Uh, oh, I definitely agree. Um, as soon as Red 13 spoke, um, that was something that I was kind of iffy about because yeah, me in, too. My, in, in my head as a kid or, or like, like playing this, like the original as, as a kid, like I always had a, like a voice for everybody um, that was in yeah. my head while I would read these people and Red 13, I just, I feel like when I was a kid that that voice would swap so much. And then when I heard him speak for the first time in this remake, I feel like it's, they, they were on par exactly with, with who they chose. Completely agree, but I think the one here that really, in the when I used to play this game originally back in the day, and I used to hear Garrett's voice, this voice actor sounds exactly yes. like the voice I used to have back then. Yeah, um, he's always got that over the top like yeah, emotion, yeah, everything emo- that he says. Correct, and like in the in the original video game, you see him waving his arm, <laughs> or he's like animated, <laughs> like all pixelated, and like you get this voice in your head of how he would sound. Mm-hmm. This guy nailed it. Straight up nailed it. Cloud, Definitely. great job. Tifa, everybody did a well job, very well rounded. Um, the only one that I have my complaints with is, and it's just because I found them stupid, was this <laughs> new character that they brought in, uh, Roche or Roche? Oh, uh, Roche. Roche, yes. Yes. Uh, I was just like, ah, nah. um, I didn't care for him much. Um, when it first showed him, you know, I was like, okay, well, here we go. We've got this little bit of this fight with this guy. Okay, you know, maybe he's a one-time enemy. Then he showed up again a little bit later. You had to battle him again. And the more I heard him, he... I wouldn't say he he grew on me, but I, I would say I got a little more tolerant towards him. Yes, because he's annoying. His voice yes. actor is annoying. I don't know if he made <laughs> yeah. him that way, but it was just like, oh, dude, shut up. Like, he went over the... like. You remember watching Pokemon and it was like Pikachu, and you could tell like exactly. just like over the top, like it's that, it's that. Yes, so to me, definitely. that's my only gripe. But I, I think that was your job because he was a bit of an annoyance in the actual game. Roach is uh, over here trying to stop you uh, from seeing Jesse's parents. You're in a, this is one of the first bike scenes that you see, the very first one, and he's the boss, and he's annoying as hell. Uh, so I, I, they they really did come out with that, um, but. 
sound quality for me outside of Roach, ten out of ten. Outside of Roach, Roach or whatever his damn name is, ten out of ten for me. Everything was Definitely. so pinpoint. point. Definitely, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a ten out of ten as well. Um, like 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 Jay was saying, man. Um, you know, voice acting was amazing. Music was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, too, just simple you know simple sound effects for interacting with things in the yeah. in the in the world. You know, sounds while you're fighting, the sounds of the hits. You know, the sounds of like your oh your, yeah your magic when it's going off. Everything everything was and, perfect. And let me just bring up the NPCs. They did such a wonderful job with the NPCs around that universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could hear conversations of what's going on with Avalanche, what's happening to the reactors, like or the MPUs. I'm sorry, MPUs, whatever the hell they're, they're called. Just the computer motherfuckers. The NPCs. computers around. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. They brought, they took this game where in the original, you know, like I said, it was just a, um, it was such a, a blue, small, a blue such a small section. <laughs> exactly. Such a small section of the world. And they put so much life into the world I agree. and just walking around, you know, you, you don't even, you can't even interact with these people, but you can hear them having conversations when certain things happen in the game. You hear their reactions to the events that just unfolded a chapter before. And you're like, Jesus, this is, this shows you how much, Everybody is impacted on that. And every voice is every voice is different. It's not the same voice, even though it, perhaps it's the same act uh, voice actor, but it's a different style of voice. Nothing's ever the same. I thought that was very intriguing, awesome part that they did uh, in regards to that. And one of my favorite things, sound wise, is when Garrett is like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes, like, the little bit shit, of fan service. Yeah, that little fan service right there after you won a battle was awesome. I thought that was very well put. Uh, and, and the voice actor just knocked it out of the park. Great job, uh, Square Enix, with the voice acting, the sound, and the sound quality, and everything. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the crux of the matter, which is a story. Um, okay. Before we jump into this, anybody, if you're watching right now, again, this is going to have spoilers. Big spoilers. Big Big spoilers spoilers. ahead. Yes. So um, Final Fantasy VII, I would not say it's a remake. I would say they should have just put Final Fantasy VII, the retelling. Um, It's totally different. Um, so basically, everything for you guys who have never played Final Fantasy VII, you guys are missing out from the original. Go back and play it, but it follows pretty much the same concept um, of the original Final Fantasy VII up to the point where the plate drops. So you know, Cloud, his memories are foggy. He shows up here at Midgar. He runs into Tifa, uh, and and Tifa offers him a job as a, a, a gun for hire. For Avalanche. Avalanche takes him, you know, Avalanche is this eco terrorist mm-hmm. organization who's trying to stop uh, uh, Shinra, who is this big, gigantic corporation from destroying the planet. The planet has this source of energy called Mako, and Shinra is, is taking this Mako energy. So this game follows right along that same pathway that was from the original. Mm-hmm. But when you're playing it, you start seeing like these hooded Voldemort fucking <laughs> Death Eater motherfuckers floating around and shit. And you don't know what the hell is going on. I do not know what the... And they're a bit of a nuisance. They're annoying as hell. Um, in the I story. definitely agree. They do got... Um, I assume when I saw them for the first time, I thought... First and foremost, I thought, what the hell are they doing adding these things into it? And as you, as you play through it, you know, they start showing up, you know, you know more Continuously. frequently. Continuously. Yeah, they, they show up more and more. Um, you have some, some, some fight interactions with them. Um, there's interactions with them in cutscenes, um, and it wasn't until the end that you finally understand what's going on, and it kind of brings it all into perspective for Correct. you. Correct. And but these, it, 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 yes, it did take me off guard. And these cloak figures are called whispers. So basically, the job of the whispers is to make sure that fate stays on track. In other words, you already know the story of Final Fantasy VII, so their job is to make sure that happens again. That it stays on track, on course. Um, of course, you don't find this out too later in the end. So everything happens as it usually does in Final Fantasy VII. You know, Cloud, uh, you know, they, they destroy the first reactor. They see the collapse of, of how it affects everybody. And they're like, what the hell went on? Then you find out that Shinra was the one that actually exploded the Mako reactor um, and caused all this damage. They go and do it again. Um, to another reactor, and then Claude Files finds Ares. It follows the exact same plan. Now, here is where everything makes a, a twist. So you lead up all the way up to the point where you go to the Shinra Tower, okay? Just like the original. If you guys haven't played the original, 
you guys are missing out, but I'm sure most of you have. So it, you just go to the Shinra Tower. Everything in the story is exactly the same, uh, except for like a little things that are added on. Like I said, Roge, where there's a motorcycle cutscene here and there. Mm -hmm. Everything is pretty much the same. <clears throat> you go to the Shinra Tower, and then you meet, of course, Sephiroth. You find out that Sephiroth, uh, you know, is about to kill the president. And that's a little bit different because in the original one, you just walk in, the president has a sword stuck in his back. Definitely. And that's one of the things that I did not like about this new game is they stayed away from the blood. A lot away from the blood. <laughs> um, yes. They, you can definitely tell um, when they were remaking this, they did change a lot of things simply because, I guess, of the way things are nowadays. Um, they definitely did change quite a few mm -hmm. things. So, you know, normally in the original, you trail of blood it's actually all red okay here it's like this purple glowy gooey alien shit and then in in the original i'm serious i'm not i'm not lying it's really weird and then in the original you know sephiroth cuts the head off shinova and carries her head uh here you don't <laughs> you don't get to see that okay you just see him carry the body yeah, um, he, he, he carried the body in this, which was uh, a little bit of a different thing for me, too, because it does show him walking away with the body. And I, I could have sworn, I'm glad that you brought that up, because I completely forgot about that little detail. Um, in the original, he did take the head only. And in this, he took the whole body. Correct. So it was just a little bit weird there. So then um, Sephiroth, in, you know, Cloud is there, and Cloud's like, uh, my head. And one of the things, my favorite things is, like, the way he's like, uh, like, he has a migraine and shit, because I can still mm -hmm. relate. When I be working, I be getting them nasty ass headaches. Uh, Hell but, yeah. um, and the way they did his cutscenes with Sephiroth were great. Were great. The way they wove it into the story, because this usually happens after they leave Midgar. They wove it into Midgar a lot. Because Sephiroth wasn't really part of the Midgar until the very end when they're about to storm the Shimra Towers and they go to the very top. That's when Sephiroth comes out. But you normally don't see Sephiroth. Um, so Sephiroth has this exchange and then he kills Garrett, which is something I was like, what the hell? Like, Definitely. how did that even I had, happen? I had the exact same reaction because, um, I mean, like he's saying, you, you, you walk up, you have this interaction with the Shimmer president. Sephiroth comes up, shanks him in the back. Okay, they did they changed it a little bit differently, but he still killed him. And then out of nowhere, Sephiroth lunges, kills Barrett, and that instantly, I was like. Y'all just changed the entire thing. What the hell are you doing? He I got that so guy with mad. The machine gun hand? Yes. Yes. He, he stabs Garrett. him in the chest. He stabs him in the chest. And I'm like, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, exactly. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? And I was so pissed. I was like, what the? I was like, I knew they were going to change this motherfucking shit. Like, I knew it. And like, they, they made me fight this game. And I was all hyped up. But then you find out that the ancients, these cloaked Voldemort or Death Eater figures, they come and they get inside Garrett and they revive him because he's not supposed to die. They stop. They, he, he's, his fate was not to die at that point. So they yes. revive him. And that's when we find out exactly what the whispers are. Red 13 even knows about them. So does Aerith. And Aerith in this video game in particular, um, you know, in the original one, Aerith is very lighthearted, open. And if in the beginning cutscene, she doesn't run away. She just walks with confidence out into the street. In this game, she's scared of these whispers. They're chasing her from the very beginning. And so she has so much knowledge about them that she doesn't even share a lot of it. You just find out because she's forced to. So she tells you exactly about how that's the interaction is with the whispers, what they really are. And then you find out that you are trying to change fate. Uh, but you don't have time to think about it because the moment you, you, you get this information, you just charge straight out as Cloud to fight Sephiroth. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, the story resumes as it normally should. The vice president of Shinra, the son of the, the president of Shinra, arrives mm -hmm. to battle with him, okay, as Cloud. And everything is, is the same. You know, he has and a, um, just, a, just a quick note on that. For anybody who's going to play this, when you get to that fight, Leave a comment on this podcast. Let me know how much he pissed you off. Because, man, I was ready to throw the controller. I was like, don't do it. They're expensive. They're expensive. He, he, Stagger. He, you got you to gotta counter. You have to counter. He wiped my ass up and down that floor, the first time I he swear. Did <laughs> the first time he did. He did me. And I ain't got to lie. Like he, he did, did me but dirty. He, did he me almost dirty. killed me. And then I just kept running around throwing cures. 
And I had like at the time items because I wasn't playing hard mode. I was just throwing items like a motherfucker, and I barely used them. I started using them at that specific fight. But, yes. But uh, it's a great fight, though, by the way, and it's great cutscenes. So you defeat him, the president of Shinra, and then you know it cuts into this. To in my opinion, the most OP boss fight is this robot, and it's just you, Aerith, and Red Thirteen, who's not a playable character. He's just there to help you, and he just chomps. Like, once every <laughs> 10 fucking minutes, he throws a little bite that has, like, five power. It's so fucking yes. stupid. Uh, that's one of my things I did not like. They did not use Red 13 like I thought he would. Like Yes, I completely agree. Red 13 not being a playable character the way the others are, I feel like he was very underutilized. Yes, and maybe because he was just going to be on screen for such a short amount of time. Um, Probably. But in this fight, he was worthless. Like yeah, he didn't, he didn't do anything. <laughs> And like I have, nothing. and it's this big robot who has like multiple shields. Like it's not just one shield. He has a shield on all of his wheels. He has a shield on his body and a shield on his arm. It was fucking ridiculous. And then he's got the little shield drones that fly around him that you gotta yes. take out first before you can even damage him. And then Red so, 13's like, I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bite your tire. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna bite your tire for five. This motherfucker <laughs> has like 9,999. Five. Okay, thank you, 9,994. Like it was stupid. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I luckily, as I said, I was playing normal mode, classic mode as a, and I was able to win with, because of my, my arsenal that I had, I had saved like nine potions, all this crap. So I beat it, but I can't imagine how it's going to be hard mode. I'm playing hard mode now. Hey, did you okay? guys, did you guys get all the summons? Cause I heard you have to like, yes, a lot of shit to get them. Yes and no. Yes. And no. <clears throat> Thank you for bringing that up. Ali. So go ahead, Tony, take it away. So with the summons, um, I am missing one summon, um, and I still have not been able to do it. I've been grinding, you know, post-game content, you know, trying to do these battle simulations to try and level up my materials. There is one summon that I, I have not yet been able to beat him, um, and that is that is Bahamut. That is the infamous Hard Bahamut. I have gotten him down so low, so low, where I'm like, all right, one more special ability, and I'm going to beat him. And then he does this un unblockable, uncounterable yes. <laughs> mega flare and just wipes your whole team. Your whole team. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, two of my team are max level. I've got them as high as I can possibly go. Aerith is the only one who's not max level. She's, on, she's, she's only two levels away. And they all have full health at this point. Mega flare wipes them instantly. And you know what? I think that you have to level up your gear to a certain point where it has that one thing where if, if the boss does this one... A hit and they knocked you all out. You 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 survive with just you survive one, with like one HP. One HP. I need, I need to figure out how to do that because yeah, I, I'm, I'm he, figuring that out now. I, I, look, outside of that, Elias, at the very beginning, you mm -hmm. get Ifrit, um, which is very normal. Then uh, you find this little guy who's like working on materia, building materia. That's how you get Shiva, and then you get that fucking little fat, Chadley. Yes, uh, Chadley. There you go, and then you get like this fat Rudy Poo bird. Uh, that's a Choco. <laughs> And then you get the actual chocos in the gameplay. Um, and then you get Leviathan uh, after you... Because you have to, like, upgrade your material a lot. That's one of the things I will say, guys. For me, I have knocked out everything. All I got to do is average the material to be able to unlock Bahamut and, and, and actually face him the way I want to. Um, so I'm still doing that. But it, once you beat the game in hard mode, you get double XP and all that stuff. Mm. So you can increase everything a lot easier. Uh, but as far as the summonings, they were great. Leviathan, I had Leviathan. Chocobos, I had the fat Chocobo, I had Ifrit, and I had Shiva and Leviathan. All I need is Bahamut or whatever his name is. Um, yes. And um, if you did have a chance to pre order the game, yes, you, that's did correct. Get, you did get some bonus summons. I believe with the addition that I got, I got a Cactuar summon. And so I All do right. have a separate one uh, or, or an additional summon. Uh, words and thoughts on Cactuar. He's good in the beginning. Once you hit about chapter four or five, he is fucking useless. <laughs> he does nothing to save you. That's exactly what I heard. I heard like the summons, like the little cats and everything. They're not that good. Just stick to the regular summons from yes. the game. But but actually, the graphics just with the summons is amazing. Just to let you guys know, it's amazing. Um, so you know, going back to the story here, you 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 beat the vice president. And, and then, you know, you run away from the Sh uh, Shinra building, just like in the story, and you get out. And I think the worst boss fight of all fucking time is that stupid tank 
with you in the motorcycle. <laughs> you only have three moves, guys. Three moves when you're in the motorcycle. You can slash left, you can slash right, and you can do like this spinner thing on your bike. And that's it. Like, I agree. That's it. That fight was such long. a pain. I it thought I had I thought I had the methods down, you know, in the first mini game, well, you, you know, you, you know, the first bike mini game, the fight against Rose Truck you mentioned earlier. Yeah. I thought I had it down. Then this boss comes in out of nowhere. Uh, oh my god. Let me tell you. I was pissed. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that fight was so frustrating. It, it it was to me, in my opinion, it was the worst. Like you don't even have spells. At least throw some goddamn lightning. You know what I mean? Something, like, fucking, something, something that you know that could damage something like 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 that, like a robot. You know, lightning would be perfect. You can't even do that. No, I'm gonna poke you on the left, or I'm gonna poke you on the right. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> that's it. That's all you do, guys. So at the end of this, you think the game's over because this is usually when the when you're out of Midgar and the story just ends. No, guys. Spoiler twist. Apparently, Sephiroth, there's two Sephiroths, I, I think. There's a Sephiroth from uh, the original Final Fantasy VII, and then there's a Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII. And the one from, from let's just say it's Sephiroth, Timeline Sephiroth. So Timeline Sephiroth is from another timeline, and he has all this knowledge. Um, and Aerith is also in the same boat as him. Like, she has all this knowledge. So they decide they're going to change fate. Okay. It sounds so stupid when I'm talking about it. Like, it, it really I, I definitely agree with what you're saying um, with, with, with how it sounds. Um, the way it's played out is perfect. Um, I did kind of get that confusion as well. Um, every time we encountered Sephiroth in this, he just, he didn't seem the same as he did in the original. He seemed Correct. like he knew so much more, like he was trying to meticulously do things differently. And everything While he said, still disguising them to look the same. Everything he said was a fucking riddle. A fucking riddle. You don't know everything. what the, Even in the, at the end, you're like, okay, so you open up this portal, right? You open up this portal. Uh, Sephiroth opens up this portal. You meet him at the very end. And he's like, come at me, motherfucker. And Cloud's like, all right, I'm going to come at you. And then Sephiroth, and Eris like, right, yeah. bitch, bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like getting in there. And then Eris like, no, just to let you know, if you cross this, we're going against fate. And, and as, if we go against fate, who knows what's going to happen, obviously. And so we're like, oh, I was just like, okay, I guess. Like, what, what's her point? And then she basically says it. Like, you know, she, she, lets, she lets you know that she knows way more than originally you know. And that nobody is the enemy but Sephiroth. And he's trying to change fate. And you need to stop fate and change fate too. So you go through this port as a team. And you fight what I would say is like the main boss of the Whispers. Yes, um, the Whisper Harbinger. Yes, and you, you defeat him. All right, whatever. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if it's before this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, because maybe I'm, I'm having like time lapse here. But do you fight Sephiroth before the Whispers? Or, no, it's after. No, yeah. So you fight. First, you go through this portal. You get on the other side and you see this massive thing. To me... I played the Kingdom Hearts games. As soon as I walked through that portal, I was like, that looks like the darkness thing from the Kingdom Hearts games. The one that's always used in the <laughs> tutorials. Um, speaking a little more on the, on the Harbinger fight itself, you can't Harbinger damage right. this big enemy. He's got three little minions that are with him. One that fights with a sword, one that fights with a gun, and one that side fights with its bare fists. In the game, you have this material. It's called Assess, and you can scan the enemies, find out their weaknesses, Correct. find little information. If you assess these these three enemies, you find out that they are a shadow from the future trying to keep the present intact, like trying to keep fate intact. And for me, what I got from that when I assessed them was, okay, I'm fighting future versions of Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa. Oh, wow. See, I didn't think of it like that. I thought it was yes. two stupid things that just like what were copycats. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, that's... I, 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 I utilize the assess material for every little thing, just simply because I like understanding like a little bit of lore behind some of these enemies too, yeah. and understanding things like that. So when I read that, instantly it clicked in my head. Yeah. This definitely is fighting fate because I'm fighting future versions of us that are trying to stop us from changing things. I see. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting take. I didn't think of it like that. Fuck. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh exactly. My God. So you beat the Harbinger, right? And yes. you have this big showdown with Sephiroth. 
Okay. And I mean, you have this big ass showdown with Seth Rollins. Now, oh I haven't faced God. I haven't faced someone on hard mode, but I'm gonna tell y'all something, folks. Uh, I'm not a bad gamer. I whooped that motherfucker ass. <laughs> um, I I learned how to counter very quickly, and I started using that counter stance on his ass, staggering him left and right. Um, at, I got him to a certain point where you know you actually defeat him, and he's like. Find me, Cloud. And he cuts like another portal and he walks through his portal. And Cloud's like, all right. So he runs in, right? And this is the most, ah, man. This is where shit gets very interesting. I don't know if it's a positive thing. You can even tell because Tony's over here like, I need to get ready to address this. So you go inside this portal and Sephiroth tells you this is the edge of the world. Have no clue what the fuck he's talking about like this went somewhere totally different and he's telling cloud oh i'm trying to change things i'm not trying to go back to the way things were you just don't even know what you're doing you have seven seconds that seven seconds line was like what the fuck is he talking about and he's like you have seven seconds what are you gonna do in those seven seconds i guess we're gonna find out and that's basically it in my opinion and the seven seconds is left to interpretation it could be the seven seconds before in the original game Sephiroth stabs Eric. It can be seven seconds before the meteor hits the Earth, uh, who is the enemy in the Final Fantasy VII, the original. Uh, the seven seconds could be so many fucking things. It's just left to your interpretation, and that's how the game ends. So, yes. you, you finish the game. You're like, oh, shit. Like, is it over? And then, all of a sudden, you see Zack in the background. In the midst of all this fighting, in the midst of all this Sephiroth, you see Zack. Um, fighting all these soldiers, and if if you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, you know Zack is the one that saves Cloud at the end and he dies, and then Cloud uses him as his memory, and he thinks he's Zack, and uses a lot of Zack's history or story, right? So Zack is over here fighting, and normally he dies, right? No, yes, he survives, and then if they step out of this this teleportation thing, right, and it starts raining, and you see Zack carry Cloud to Midgar. So basically, they're inferring that in the timeline, Zack survives. And then Aerith is like, oh, I miss the steel cloud. And then it ends. Yes. So that ending threw me for a loop. First and foremost, when I fought, when I beat the Harbinger, I was like, GG, we're good. Then your boy Sephiroth shows up and I damn near cried. Because I had, I had, before leading into this game, I avoided everything that I possibly could. I saw one trailer, and it was the announcement trailer, like, what, five years ago or something like that. And I avoided everything since then. Mm. So when I saw that, I flipped out. I was, I was, I was, I was ecstatic I to fight him. I, was, I, was I beat happy. him. Like you said, you know, you get this cutscene, you go in, Cloud fights him for a second in the cutscene. Um, and then Sephiroth, you know, disarms him. Tells him, I don't want to kill you. I need your strength. You have seven seconds. What you do with it is up to you. And you see this cutscene with Cloud. Or, I'm sorry, with Zack. And to me, I took it as Sephiroth telling Cloud, you have seven seconds to change something. Let's see what you do. And so in my mind, Cloud said, I'm going to help Zack survive. So I, oh. I feel like he changed Zack's, Zack's fate. But at the same time, in that cutscene... Well, throughout the entire game, you see these little symbols of a dog with a little commando helmet. It's supposed Correct. to be the symbol of Avalanche and like the Rebellion, you know, little safe places. In that cutscene with Zack, there is a potato chip bag that flies across that has that dog. However, it is a different looking dog. So I'm wondering now if the Zack that we saw survive, if that is in like a, a, a parallel universe or a different timeline, or if at some point these two timelines are going to intersect with each other. Yeah, I, I basically took from it that the, the writers of this new uh, remake are going a different direction. Um, yes. I, they're going to change something. And basically, they don't want you to be like, oh, I already know the story. No, they want you to know this is not the same. It's totally yes. different. We're and going somewhere else. And maybe now they'll have the free back then with everything so constrained and the graphics and things like that. Maybe they couldn't touch things that they wanted to touch. But now they are, and I feel like someone's going to die and someone's going to survive. They're not supposed to. And yes, that's the I, feel like I, they're, I feel like they're definitely going to take liberties and change some things while still trying to... I, I feel like they're going to stay true to the story, 
in some aspects. And then in other aspects, they are going to flip it on. They are going to flip it upside down. Um, and they even kind of blatantly tell you the last thing, the last shot you get before credits roll is it tells you the unknown journey will continue. Yes. And, and so but they're pretty much telling you, you're going to get what you want, but it's going to have changes. Yeah. And I, 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 I mean, it's, it, I, I, let me get this out of the way. The game itself, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. A 9 out of 10. The reason I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 is because I don't like that any too much. Because I'm an old school gamer, I expect what I expect. And mm -hmm. this threw me off. And even if they would have done something, maybe not bring Zach back, but do something different, that's fine. But throwing Zach in the mist, like he wasn't even original, you know, like he wasn't even too much in the original. Like it just throws everything all away, all away and I don't like that. Uh, but I, 9 out of 10. But the ending left so much for interpretation. I feel like, I think the reason they did that, because once you're done with this game, you want to play the second to find out what mm -hmm. the hell is going on. And yeah, that's you, the way I took it. It leaves you wanting to experience that again. Okay, now knowing how this ends and everything that I've gone through, let me go back and do it again and see what I could have possibly missed, what details just flash by and I never realized it. Uh, for, you, for, for me, I'm going to go ahead... Um, Everything overall, I'm gonna go. I, I'd give it an eight, uh, an eight point five out of ten. Um, okay. I'd give it an eight point five out of ten. Um, gameplay was fantastic. Music was music carries this game. Um, story, same little changes, things like that. They did kind of get to me as well. Um, but I feel like they did them in a decent way. There are some things that were changed um, that I feel like like Zach. Um, that whole harbinger fight at the end that didn't happen in the original um those kind of threw me off a little bit so that brings it down a little bit for me as well another thing that kind of brings it down to me or down for me um is they they, they took this 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 one-dimensional world and made it three-dimensional and made it they, they put so much life into midgar into everything mm -hmm. um with not a lot of explorability i guess you could say like i wish yes. we would have had some, give like, that. more of an opportunity to to move around a little bit more to to interact with a few more things or, or to be able to experience things a little bit better while you're just kind of running around you know roaming doing whatever i agree you're with that be. that's a good take yeah um what, what else was i gonna say it's very linear like you're following the characters you can't really go this way or that way it's just like you got to follow yes. the characters or you got to go through this tunnel or like it's very it leads you exactly where you need Go. It doesn't really give you that opportunity. Yeah, to go inside for, of the house and explore. It give you for, that. for taking these worlds and making them so full of life and 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 adding so much energy into them, it is it is definitely a very linear path. Mm -hmm. Um, the the last thing that I feel like would bring it down for me, um, is I'm gonna say is not so much the game itself, but the marketing of the game. Um, simply because the game on the box that I'm looking at here says Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is part one, from what I understand, of the remake. There's going to be multiple parts. Nobody knows how many parts they're going to do. Correct. I feel like they definitely could have marketed that a little bit better because there's going to be some people that have never played the original and are going to go into this and be like, that was it? That, that, are they going to make a sequel at some point? This game, I feel like they definitely could have just marketed a little bit better. Hey, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1, Midgar. Or part two, Genova. Part three, Sephiroth. Something, yeah. some sort of, some, some sort of a little bit more of a clarification on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, and that's a fair point. Uh, um, I, I feel like they're I, like they marketed too much for the remake, like oh, yes. it's a remake, and it's not really a remake. It's a, um, it's a, it's just a different story in, in yes. a way. It's still the same, but it's different. I don't know how to explain it. If you play the game, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you play the original. Um, I'm gonna tell y'all right know, now from listening y'all talking about this story. I'm giving it like a five. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, honestly, if if should I play? Play. It's yes. worth it. Play the and game. The, and the replayability is awesome. I'm playing hard mode now, and once you get into the rhythm, when you play hard mode, then you actually get the aspect of what materials need to be on this character. How can I make this materia better? Or, or how can I make this character better? How can I adjust his weapons? Like, things like that, that mm. really, really gets uh, a hard mode going. And hard mode is really hard. I'm not even going to lie to you. They make hard mode is a pain. It's a pain. And, like, I, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've died in total, like, four times. Um, and I'm barely on Chapter 6. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I'm, on planning, I'm planning on playing it, but I'm waiting for it for the PC release, which is next year. 
So it's, it's yeah, so have, you'll be waiting for a little yeah, while. Yeah, this game has a year um, of exclusivity on PS4. Um, Let me think here. I mean, you guys know, uh, as far as anybody watch shows, I don't really have a PS4. I had to borrow this PS4 uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> in order to play this game. I bought the game, but I borrowed the PS4. And I, I did it because I thought it was worth it. I'm a big Final Fantasy VII fan. And yeah, it was worth it, man. Go ahead and get it. If you want to wait, yeah. that's fine. But this isn't like Resident Evil 3. This is Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. You go out Don't and even get, get me started. <laughs> yeah. Go out and get it. Play it. It's worth the $60. It's a great game. Overall, 9 out of 10. Tony over here told you 8.5 out of 10. That still means it's a good game. Hands down. Yes, I, I completely agree. The game is definitely worth playing. Like I said, they take this three or four hour section of the original and turn it mm-hmm. into a full game. And it's not a full game in the means of there's so much clutter where you you, you forget the story by the time you get to the next section. Mm-hmm. The game is amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it's I, I agree. very, very good. I agree. Minor nitpicks is what brings it down for me. And that's just my personal opinion. Hey, man, we, we all have a right to that, and, you know, still a good game. Go out and get it. Uh, that'll Definitely be out worth buying this game. Guys. Yeah, that'll be it for us. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate you yeah, popping on Yeah, thank you so by. much, Tony, for stopping by and helping like, us. Late minute. We got to bring you on more often, dude. That was actually really good. <laughs> um, I, I Shoot me a message anytime, man. I'll be here. Yeah, okay. Even if I'm just here in the background. Like... That's fine. <laughs> That's exactly what I was asking for. <laughs> But uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for everybody stopping by and watching. Uh, yes, we went a little bit long, but honestly, it was really captivating and interesting listening to these guys who were into this game, like talk about this game. Does it mean I'm gonna get it? No, not yet. <laughs> but you know, it's all good. Can't wait to uh, uh, next year to <laughs> play the game. But uh, yes, if you guys who watch this uh, review, if you guys have your own comments, please leave them in the comments below. Give us all your opinions. Give, let us know about Final Fantasy. Of course, we'll answer everything. And as always, our main podcast is on Mondays. Uh, Hump Day shows every Wednesdays. Main podcast is also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and any other podcasting platforms. Yes, sir. That you listen to. All right. Well, thanks again, Tony. JP. Catch you guys next time. Not a problem. See, See you y'all next later. Time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know they did that too in Final Fantasy 15. Uh, they did do that. They did. But it's not the same. Oh, but it's it's Gary. We don't talk about that one. We don't talk about that one.